The Positron IDE is a fantastic new tool that brings together the best from RStudio and VS Code for data scientists. And in today's video, I'll show you what Positron is, how it works and how I have set it up so that I can do all of my R and Python coding work inside of it. So let's dive in. All right, so this is what you might see when you first open up Positron. Well, not exactly. It will probably be smaller. Here I have zoomed in using Control minus and Control plus to show you more of the content inside the IDE. When you see this, then you will immediately notice that it looks familiar to our studio. At the bottom here, you have your console where you can throw an R code and this console is always there. You always have a fixed R session that you can work with. Similarly, if I were to declare some variables, then you'd see on the right in the values pane here that there is all your variables in there and you can look up the value and then you also have a plots window that you can minimize if needed and if you create a plot i'm just going to create an ugly standard base r plot then you'll see here plots in the plot view so r studio users will feel right at home here and you will probably think that this is boring but if you come from vs code i think this is actually huge alone for this reason i would recommend positron over vs code another case in point is the help window when i would look at the plot function and then press f1 then you see that here there is a dedicated window for the documentation and then i could look at this and here i'd see all of the content from the help pages and the same thing works with python if i were to make this a little bit larger here and then i would switch to python via this drop down or via the drop down here on top and then i could do stuff like import folders as pl and then i could for example check out the data frame function and here i'd see the document documentation for data frames. The visual optics of this help page aren't perfect yet, but still it's such a great helper when you quickly just want to look something up for a function. And I love how easy it is for both R and Python to do this. So here I see this as a clear sign that this IDE is not only helpful for R users, but also for people who are using Python. But I'm going on a tangent here. This video is mostly for R users. So let's switch back to R. So now that you've seen the useful components for data scientists that are inside of Positron, Let's figure out how to rearrange them really easily. The nice thing is that Positron comes pre-equipped with multiple layouts that you can use. All you have to do is to go to this little icon on the top right and, for example, select the side by side layout, which I think is perfect. I like to have my console variables and plots on the right and have all that space on the left for code. For example, I could create a new file and then I could do some calculations like one plus one. And then if I were to press control and enter, the code is immediately sent to my console. I think this combo makes for really fast iterations and I really enjoyed this way of coding. Now, one thing that you cannot get around in Positron is the command palette. It is this one central tool with which you can do basically anything. If you press Control Shift P, you will have access to all of the commands that are inside Positron. For example, you could look for a dark theme and then you could toggle to the dark theme here. Or for example, you could say that you want to have a new file and then you'll get to the same menu that we've just seen. And then you could create another file with Control S, you save it, give it some name, test.r, and then you have a test.r file. Similarly, you can access any settings or if you want, you can access any shortcut. So here you see how customizable Positron is just like VS Code. You can, inside of the settings and keyboard shortcuts, change a whole lot of things to make this IDE really your own. Compared to VS Code, Positron is more plug and play. For starters, if you're coming from our studio, much of the common keyboard shortcuts work immediately and you don't have to set up anything. Case in point, if you go back into our R script, you could for example declare a variable and then press Control minus to throw the minus operator to assign stuff that's a short key that comes from our studio and it works perfectly fine here similarly you could also do Control shift m to throw as many pipes as you'd like also we've already talked about how Control enter sends stuff to your console but you can also source a whole script by Control shift enter you'll see that reflected in the console once again all of these things are ready for you in positron there are no settings you have to switch on for this to work. So I'm hoping that you're starting to see how you can feel really right at home inside of Positron when you come from our studio. But there's one thing that is definitely different in Positron and you have to know about it. Namely, there are no R Studio projects. If you have been using them, that's great. It's a fantastic tool. But inside of Positron, you don't have that available. Instead, Positron works with folders which operate more or less like R Studio projects did in R Studio. You can see here that I'm currently in one folder that is called 101 
Positron, which is the folder for this YouTube video. You can see here in the path that it is within my R projects, within the YouTube videos directory, and this is the folder I'm currently in. Basically, folders work exactly like our studio project in the sense that your root directory, if you would put in get working directory, you'd see that the path is set to my directory. And in the file explorer, I can also only see the files that are inside of this directory. And when you're not sure how to open up your directory, when in doubt, remember you can always do control shift P and then look for folder. And then it will say right here, file open folder. And it will also tell you the current shortcut for this, which is control K followed by control O. And then if you click on this, you could open a different folder. One feature that I'm really excited about inside of Positron is the Zen mode. I think it comes from VS Code, but that doesn't matter at all. I just really enjoy it and I want to show you how it works. I like to think that the Zen mode is a perfect way to get rid of all distractions and only focus on the things that you need to worry about, namely the code and its outputs. If you do Control Shift P and then look for Zen mode, you can toggle the Zen mode. Here you see that lots of the UI was minimized or disappeared so that I can focus solely on the code. But don't worry, your console is still there. If I do Control Enter on this line of code, you'd see that the console immediately pops up and shows me what I've done. So this here gives me a way to concentrate on only my code and the outputs. And one way to enhance this even more is to get rid of this centered layout here for the code editor. See this? This white space here around I don't like this and with Control shift P I can look for the centered layout and toggle it and that way the centered layout is gone speaking about things that I want to do I like to customize my shortcuts to go with my workflow for example I've customized the keyboard shortcuts using the keyboard shortcuts UI to do Control B to toggle the console and do Control shift B to toggle the sidebar that way when I'm in my code file depending on what I need I have only my code I might have my code and the console. I might have code, console and files. And depending on the situation, I can flexibly change whatever I need. Similarly, I do have set up control one for the editor, control two for the console and control three in case I ever need to work with the terminal. So with control one, two and three, I can switch to the stuff that I want to do. This helps me to glue my fingers to the keyboard and switch between panels faster. I do have a few more shortcuts like control Control L to clear my console in case the wall of text is annoying me. But if you want to see all of my shortcuts, I will share my key bindings file that you can import into Positron to use the same shortcuts if you want. All right, enough about shortcuts. Let's talk about UI settings as well. I want to show you my favorite settings that I changed to make Positron work for me. We could technically change everything using the UI, but the cool thing, just like with the shortcuts, is that we can also look at all the settings in a JSON format. This might not be pretty, but it shows all of your settings in a short and concise way. Here I've commented out all of my settings so that in this demo you saw Positron from the default state in the beginning. But now that you've seen the defaults, let me highlight a few of my favorite changes. So let's throw another panel in here. Let's get rid of the console. We don't need that right now. You see, I've implemented a couple of font family changes where I've used Fira font as my font family for the code. I've made it a little bit bold. I could do even more going with a weight of 600 but I don't think that's that great so this is why I've stuck with 500. Similarly I can make the line height a little bit larger and then you see here that the scroll bars are really wide I don't like that that much so this is why I've made it much smaller that way I have once again more real estate for my code to live in. Speaking about more real estate remember the centered layout in the zen mode I like to default it to false so that I never have to change the center layout and don't use it at all. Finally a couple more UI changes that might be useful for you is making the UI a little bit more compact. Let me throw out these parts and you can see now due to this changes that the top window bar of Positron also moved away. Now I have even more space for my code and I made sure that the panels here are narrow. So now let's talk about our specific changes. You can see them via this bracket R thing. So in these curly brackets you have all of my changes that are specific to our code. Most of these changes Positron threw in by default but one thing that I do want to show you is the 
code formatting options. I like to format my code on save and I want to use the new air tool which helps you to format our code. Let me show you that in the script. So now that this is safe, let's have a look at our extensions. Right now I've toggled the sidebar but it shows me the explorer and not the extensions. So with control shift P I can do focus and then I want to focus on the extensions and here I see all of my extensions that I have installed. And I'm using this air extension because it helps me to format code. You should also install the quarter extension because it doesn't ship with Positron. But other than that, I don't really have any R specific extensions. Feel free to let me know in the comments what your favorite extension is. Maybe I'm adopting that too. In any case, you see that I have the air extension, which means I can use it for code formatting. So if I were to use plots one through two and two, two, three, and if I were to don't put in a white space and then hit control S to save it, you see that it was automatically adjusted. Similarly, I could throw in one white space, save everything, and then everything is re-indented according to the rules that are implemented in the air extension. So this is a huge quality of life improvement for developers because it makes it really easy to just remove or add a white space to re-indent or reformat your code according to some formatting rules. I do have the same things set up for Python here, but there I'm using the black formatter, which is another extension. By the way, in case you've been wondering how I've been using the multi-line editor, if you do control shift and down arrow, you see that you can do as many multiple cursors as they want, and then you could even highlight multiple things. We're almost at the end of this video, but I can't let you go just yet. I do want to round off this video with a word of caution. You see, Positron hasn't been around that long. After all, it is still in a beta version. This means that there are still some bugs that might annoy you. Don't think that Positron isn't working due to these bugs. It is already working great, but still there are some kinks to iron out and I do want to show you this just so that you have the full picture. So let's check that out. If I were to use the mutate function in here, you see that right now Positron is complaining. It says no symbol named mutate is in scope. In a sense, this is a great feature because it tells me that this script cannot work on its own. But if I were to write in library tidyverse in here, then you still see that, okay, this error is still there. It's the same thing when I call library deplier. It's not a tidyverse thing. It's a problem with the fact that right now I haven't executed this code yet, so the mutate function isn't in my current session yet, so this is why this mutate is unknown. But the moment I execute this part here, let's get rid of the set settings here, the moment I do that, you see that the underlining is gone. This isn't a huge issue, but it can be annoying. Similarly, if you were in the settings, if you were to change the font sizes to something like 24 to make the font huge, and then go to the documentation of the plot function and look in there, you see that right now, everything still looks normal. But if I were to reload my window and then check out the plot documentation, then you'd see that, okay, in here you have code fonts huge and the rest of the text small. At first, this kind of thing has been a really annoying issue for me because for my screencasts, I like to have the font huge, but then no one can read the help documentation. So this is why instead I use this control plus and control minus to zoom everything. And especially in combination with Zen mode, this works pretty great. So it is not a huge issue, but still something that might bother you. So let's reload the window so that the small font sizes take effect again, and then everything is fine again. Finally, another small thing that I've noticed is that if I were to have a board, it's not currently defined, but if I were to use from the pins package a board, for example, pins board local, and I were to take this and pipe this into the pin read function, then you'd see that there pops up a small documentation page that tells me what argument I'm filling right now. Right now I'm technically in the name argument because I'm filling in the second argument as the first argument is already filled by what came before the pipe. But here it doesn't detect that but when I would write the name then it would switch and see what's going on there. Again this is just a minor issue and all of these things have already been reported to POSIT so they will likely change sooner rather than later. Perfect now you have a complete picture of all the things that POSITRON does great and there are a whole lot of these things. And you also know about all these small little things that might annoy you. So let me know in the comments if you've already tried Positron, how you liked it, and if you want to maybe give it a chance after seeing this video. I'm happy to hear from you in the comments, and if you want to see more of my content, then you might like to check out this video. And now with all of that said, let me say thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.